Well, good morning, my friends, and good morning, Jeffrey. How are you all today? Well, we're starting it up a little bit early today. Like I said last night, when I finished up the vlog, we are going to church today. I'm working with the kids' club again. They're really short-handed, so they hit me up and said, I know you just served last week, but do you have possibly the time to do it this week? And I said, absolutely. So we're going to go do that, and then I'm going to go... I have a concern that maybe my catalytic converter is a little bit clogged, so I want to go buy some fluid, put it in my um, in my gas tank, and see if that will help clean it up. And then I want to go do some vlogging in Pasadena. Today I'm going to take us to a pretty memorable scene from a Quentin Tarantino classic. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, it's 8 a.m. on the nose on a Sunday and I'm sitting in traffic. I don't I quite understand why there's a cop car doing one of those zigzag things up there. Now it's more like a Sunday morning should be. Well, kind of some unfortunate news today is I got a message from my grandpa. And when I was in Ohio, we were kind of wondering how Ja was able to hold his bathroom business so long because... It was so cold he never wanted to go outside and we could kind of get him to go to the number one but number two is impossible and i got an email from my grandpa today saying he found a pile of i guess you'd say presents from jaw at his house so that's unfortunate pretty embarrassing so i don't know unfortunately i may have to reconsider taking jaw during the uh the winter time well the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm. All right, church was excellent. Now let's go in here and get some of this catalytic converter cleaner. All right, this stuff's supposed to do the trick. I think you just put it in your gas tank and go. So we'll hope for the best. All right, next stop, Pasadena. Look at that bridge. Well, we've made it out to Pasadena, and today the goal for the vlog is to see the house, the first fight scene in the first house that we see in Kill Bill. We see codename Black Mamba, also known as Beatrix, played by Uma Thurman, showing up at the house of Vernita Green, also known as the Bell's House. All the way back in the production and filming of Pulp Fiction, Quentin Tarantino and Uma Thurman came up with an idea for a movie that eventually, all the way in 2003, 10 years later, or more actually, they would finally make the movie. They would make Kill Bill. Now one of the interesting things about this is that at the end of the movie you see it credited to Q and U, which is Quentin and Uma. But when Quentin actually went to New York City to write this and to live with Uma Thurman and to get a better grasp on her character, he actually originally planned on doing this, but Uma Thurman got pregnant. And so that's actually, they ended up having to postpone a little bit of the filming of the movie, but that's what made this movie come together. That's where the whole story, kind of the character developed for Beatrix, and this movie was born. Now when the movie was actually finished, it was originally all supposed to be one movie. And Harvey Weinstein, the producer of the film, he wasn't big on long movies, so he talked Quentin Tarantino into turning this into a two-part movie, which Quentin actually said he was okay with because he had some scenes that he thought were gonna have to get deleted out, and this allowed him to keep scenes that he thought were cinematically beautiful to watch. Now, Kill Bill was originally meant to be an homage to Grindhouse, black exploitation, the Spaghetti Western, basically all the old B-movie type films from the 60s and 70s. But it ended up becoming quite a big hit. Uma Thurman would play an assassin who at one point worked for the character Bill. But we find out at the very beginning of the movie, as they're trying to kill Uma Thurman, Beatrix, she says to Bill, the baby's yours, and then you hear a gunshot, and you assume she's dead, but she lives. Four years in a coma, 
When she wakes up, she goes to get her revenge. Now one of the interesting moves that Quentin Tarantino makes as a director is that he chooses to have his main character, Beatrix, wear the same costume or the same outfit that Bruce Lee wore in Game of Death. Now Bill would be played by David Carradine, the now past David Carradine, but originally it was supposed to be written for Warren Beatty, go figure. But Quentin Tarantino actually said that as the script started coming together and as the part of Bill began to get bigger, he thought he needed somebody that could handle the martial arts stuff a little bit better than he thought Warren Beatty could, so. He then started, in the midst of the creation and writing of this film, he starts gearing it towards being a David Carradine starring picture. Now the whole movie basically could have been spared and never even happened if in the movie, the part where Daryl Hannah shows up at the hospital to kill Uma Thurman while in the coma would have actually happened. But if you remember, she gets a call from Bill saying, we owe her better than that. She lived through everything we've put her through. We'll wait till she wakes up and give her a fair chance. Probably the biggest mistake he ever made. Uma Thurman goes on to exact her revenge and what a great movie this is. I, I actually, when I watched the movie, I was really surprised because I would have never seen her in that part, but she does a great job and the choreography in this movie is amazing. Now we're right here at the house. Let's go up and take a look and I'll explain what happens in this scene. I'll show you the angles in which it was shot. It looks a little different, it's no longer green, but you'll definitely be able to tell that this was Vanita Green's house. Well, the first shot we see is actually Uma Thurman, Beatrix, aka Black Mamba, pulling up in the yellow pussy wagon right here that belonged to Buck that we eventually later on in the movie find out she steals. And you can actually see that house through her window. This is the house that they call the Bell's House. And it's the home of Renita Green, the first person that Beatrix comes to get her revenge on. Now in the movie, you would have seen a sign right here that said the Bell's house. And then this house would have actually been green. You see her go up to the door and Vernita Green, AKA Mrs. Bell comes out and they start. They end up going inside fighting destroying the house, basically just causing an entire bloodbath. And right in the middle of the fight, right here, you can see right outside through those crossed windows right there, you'll actually see the school bus pulls up right here. And you can see her young four-year-old daughter get off the bus. And the, both women look at each other, Vivek A. Fox and Uma Thurman look at each other. The little girl walks in and they almost act like nothing happened. Vivek A. Fox says that the little girl's dog created that whole mess, even though they're both bloody and torn up. Tells her to go up to her room and start watching shows. And then the women start basically talking like they're gonna be civil. They basically start you know, conversing and Uma Thurman basically says, I have to get revenge, but I'm not gonna do it with your daughter upstairs. I'm not gonna do it that way. And Vivek A. Fox is telling her that I'm a different person, that was a different time, and is hoping to be forgiven, but it's not going to happen. Beatrix is set on getting her revenge and even tells uh, Copperhead, that's what Vivek A. Fox's name was at one point, Copperhead. She tells her that the only revenge would be to kill Copperhead, go upstairs, kill her daughter, and then wait for her doctor husband to come home and kill him as well. As they sit and talk, then Vivek A. Fox says, look, I'm not gonna wait around for you to do this. Let's make a schedule, let's make a time when this is gonna happen. And so they decide they're gonna do it that night at a park dressed all in black. And as they argue back and forth about the specifics, Vivek A. Fox picks up a box of cereal that she's supposedly making some cereal for her daughter and she has a gun waiting inside and she takes a few shots at Uma Thurman. Uma Thurman pulls a knife out, throws it through the heart of Copperhead, Vivek A. Fox, 
and leaves her lying there dead on the floor, or dying on the floor. As she pulls her knife out, she wipes the blood off, and the four-year-old daughter is standing behind her looking at her. Now the, the real symbolism to that is that when they try to kill Beatrix, Black Mamba, Uma Thurman, when they try and kill her, the very beginning of the movie, she states that she is pregnant with Bill's baby. And we find out that for four and a half years, she's in a coma. So the symbolism here is that she would have had a daughter this same age. And she turns around and looks at the little girl and says, I did the right thing, but if you still feel raw about this in a few years, I'll be waiting for you. So originally the house was green, but it's identical. And they actually, I just talked to somebody that lives in the neighborhood and he said that they actually were here for about a week and they filmed all those fight scenes inside. They filmed it all here. It wasn't soundstage once they walked in the door and they were only using the exteriors. They actually did all that inside here and they used the kitchen that's inside here. And if you walk around the house, you actually see it is a really big house from the side. But she accomplishes her mission, which is to start the revenge. She gets one person down, she kills Copperhead, and then comes back out here, gets in her car, that we see that house through the window. And then the next scene that we see is the yellow truck, the yellow pussy wagon, driving down this street. Now most of you that have followed me for quite a while know that I've mentioned before that Quentin Tarantino actually owns a revival theater in Los Angeles and if you go back to not this past Christmas but the Christmas before, you'll actually see him in my vlog. I sat right next to him during the showing of Hateful Eight. But at that theater, he actually breaks precedent and will put together um, a certain night or maybe two nights a year where he actually shows Kill Bill 1 and 2 together the way it was intended, all as one movie. This is the house. This is the Bernita Green house from Kill Bill Volume 1. And just so you can see how big the house truly is, let's take a walk around the side. The person I talked to out here said that uh, they'd actually been in the house and that the basement is huge. He said it was almost like they stacked two houses on top of each other. See, the house continues to go all the way over into here. This is all part of the same property. It's pretty cool. Now off in the distance, we actually see the house, but this guy that I just met actually told me that he was here living here when they filmed the movie. We're the troublemakers here on the block. So uh, we were coming and we, we seen them all filming, so we kept trying to come down in our bikes and, you know, and just messing around and trying to get in a film, you know, and they were like, oh, well, you know what? We can't do it like this. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get these kids. Like, we're gonna have to get them on our side. So we're, they, uh, they lured us by, uh, by their trailer. They had a, they had a, they had one of those RVs for the snack. It was a snack shacks. And this uh, girl came and she's like, hey guys, she's like, while they're filming, she's like, I have a snack shack. If you guys want to come inside, I'll show you guys. You guys could, you guys could hang out here. You guys uh, could watch TV. There's, and then um, Jeff Goldblum actually showed uh, showed up here too, dude. And he he parked right here. He had his RV right here in front of my house and all of this street was closed down. And there was about three other, four other trailers that were right next to him, protecting him, making sure everything was fine. And it was the producers and everything like that. And we were right here just enjoying it, dude. Uh, my cousin Karen that I was telling you about, her mom is one of the freest spirits that you ever meet, dude. And she was like, oh my God, Jeff, go blue, what? <laughs> Let me see him, you know? And she's like, he's in an RV. Hopefully I see him taking a shower, you know? And <laughs> that was all of this. It was just nothing but fun, man. And we went up to Jeff Goldblum. He was right here across the street. I was like, dude, me and my brother running up to him. I didn't have nothing, but I was like, I'm gonna get this guy to sign something. 
So I was looking for something that, I, that it could be visual on. The only thing that I seen was my shoes on the bottom, the rubber, it was uh, the sole. I was like, he could sign that. Yeah. I just like, dude, can you sign my shoe? He's like, yeah, man. Check out that old Volkswagen bus. Oh, cool house. Check that one out. I'm a big fan of that house too. One thing that I noticed on my way over here was that they still have a lot of the risers up over there where they had the the Rose Bowl parade. So I'm going to swing back by there and show you some of that stuff. Look, there's the Michael Myers Halloween house. But it used to be right there. Wow, look at that mansion. That place is awesome. Especially I love this over there, the walkway up. Well, we've made it over to the grounds. And this is the actual, I guess you'd say the house or whatever. The actual headquarters of the mansion of the Tournament of Roses parade. And you can see where they had all the bleachers and everything would have been set up over here. What, eh, a little over a week ago. And here's a bit bigger view of all the grounds. Up here on the right, you're gonna see a lot of the bleachers because this is the path that the, the parade floats go down. I just got home and we're watching a little bit of the Saints and Minnesota Vikings game. And this guy's been staring at me pretty hardcore. And I don't watch football that often, but I kind of like to watch a little bit today because it's so hot out. So I bribed him. Bribed him! You're always a sucker for a treat, aren't you, my friend? You handsome devil, you. I decided to do a massive juicing right now. I'm going to make like double what I normally would make and... Uh, have it in the refrigerator, I bought an extra big jug for it. This is the one that I'm gonna use. This is like the size of a football or bigger. There it is, filled to the brim. That is a ton, a ton, ton, ton of vegetables. Well, good evening, my friends. I hope you guys all enjoyed this vlog. I actually fell asleep <laughs> a couple of hours ago and took an hour nap and realized once I got done editing the vlog that I hadn't put an ending on to it. So here you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you haven't seen Kill Bill 1 and 2 or if you've never seen it or haven't seen it in a long time, go back and revisit it. It's pretty good. I think you'll enjoy it. It's Like I said, it's, it's a mixture of spaghetti western, that grindhouse, martial arts. He just threw everything into the melting pot and I think it's a great movie. Have a great night. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>